in this lecture, we are going to start uh, in our um, discussion of plates, which is the first application of the basics, which we have already covered for in the, for the previous lectures. So, what we're going to talk about today is plate, what people call plate theory. And first, we need to maybe talk a little bit about what a plate is and what is the idea of plate theory, what the basic uh, premise behind it. So the idea of plate theory is that we have an initially flat, uh, very thin body. So it's very thin in one direction, which we call the thickness direction. And it is initially flat. So think about a surface of a table, for example, with, which is flat, a flat table. So that would be a plate as long as the thickness is much smaller than is much smaller than the in-plane dimensions of the body. So when we draw a plate, the standard example is to take a rectangular plate and as you see here it is formed by drawing a flat body with a small thickness compared to the in-plane dimensions of the plate. So if we're talking this axis is x, this axis is y, and this axis pointing down is z, and this is t. The dimension along x is usually referred to as a. Dimension along y is usually referred to as B. So what we have here is that T over A is much less than 1, and T over B is much less than 1. So fundamentally, what we have here is a situation where the thickness of the plate, which is the dimension, the third dimension, is much smaller than the rest of the dimensions. That's one thing. The other thing is that the geometry is initially flat. If it were initially curved, then we would be talking about a shell and not a plate. So when we talk about a body which is flat, it's not very, it's not very easy. So what we're really meaning by flat is we have what we call a flat reference surface. So what we do is we do identify one surface and consider this to be the reference surface for the plate. And since this surface it is two-dimensional, and if this reference surface is flat, which means it's actually a plane, then we are talking about a plate. If the reference surface is curved in one or two directions, then we are talking about a shell. Usually, for plates, what we do is we locate the reference surface halfway through the thickness. And as such, this means that we are using what we call the mid-plane as a reference surface. And since the midplane is a plane, so to say, we are going to use coordinates x and y to describe points 
on the mid plane this is in the undeformed configuration of course because if you bend it of course it will no longer remain flat but we're talking about the reference configuration or the undeformed configuration so we're going to use x and y to describe points on the mid plane and then z will describe location in thickness direction okay a plate is still a three-dimensional body it is not a two-dimensional surface but what we want to do is to see if we can instead of having all displacements and stresses and strains functions of X Y and Z if we can somehow represent them in terms of functions which depend only on X and Y so our purpose and this is really the purpose of plate theory is to eliminate the dependence on Z in the equations. So that at the end we will be able to describe the displacements, the strains and the stresses in the plate which is a three-dimensional body not in terms of functions that depend on three coordinates but functions that depend only on two coordinates which just x and, and y which is the location of a point on the mid plane of the plane so the first thing we're going to discuss for plates is how to eliminate the dependence on z in the equilibrium equations so we are going to discuss equilibrium equations of plates and this is the first thing we're going to do so again we, I'm go we are going to consider a part of a rectangular plate and I'm going to exaggerate the thickness direction so that you will be able to visualize what's going on so the mid surface is halfway through the thickness in this direction we have x in this direction we have y and in this direction here we have z so when we talked about equilibrating stresses in in, in 2D and 3D we were talking about um, finding tractions from stresses and tractions were uh, forces per unit area but let us consider a face which is perpendicular to the x-axis so the two remaining axes in that face are y and z so stresses will generate tractions which will be depending on both y and z here on, on that face so we're talking about this face here but what we want to do is to avoid any dependence on z 
because we want to end up with two-dimensional equations. That's the simplification we are trying to make so that we are reducing the complexity of the analysis based on having thickness much smaller than the dimension of the plate. So what we do is instead of trying to work with forces per unit area, we try to work with forces per unit length of the mid plane. So what we want to do is to find force per unit length of the mid plane. Okay. Very well. So let us look at what type of tractions appear on this face here. This is the normal is positive x direction. So we have three tractions. We have a traction which is normal to the face, which is sigma x. We have a traction in z direction, which is tau xz. And we have a traction in y direction, which is tau xy. So these are forces per unit per unit uh, area. So if we need to calculate the net force on the face, we are going to integrate. So let's say that we want to calculate the net force in x direction. This will be an integration of sigma x the area where the area here is dz dy. Very well, so now we can write this as integration and the integration over z goes from minus t over 2 to t over 2 sigma x dz dy where t is a thickness. The thickness need not be constant everywhere. It can change from one point to another. Yeah? So it might be a function of y. Doesn't matter for us. And this here is nothing other than force per unit length in y direction. And of course, the reason why the unit length is in y direction because this is the phase which is perpendicular to x. And this we call the stress resultant in x direction and it is denoted by nx. So we have here that nx equals integration from minus t over 2 to t over 2 sigma x dz. Similarly, if we're talking about the resultant force in y direction, and of course we will we can easily see that the resultant force in y direction is going to be on this face here is just the integration of tau xy dz dy and this will end up being the integration of the integration with respect to z of tau xy dz through the thickness dy and this now is again force per unit length in y direction and this is what we call NY, where NY is just integration tau xy dz. The third force is going to be force in z direction. And the force in z direction is going to be the integration of tau xz dz dy and this you can easily write it as integration with respect to y of the integration with respect to z from thickness over 2 to thickness over minus thickness over 2 to thickness over 2 of tau xz dz dy and this now is force per unit length in y direction which we call 
Qx, where Qx is minus t over 2 to t over 2 del xz z. Of course, the reason why we call nx and ny n, while the force in z per unit length we call it Qx, is very simple. nx is actually in plane force, normal force in x direction. Yeah. And xy is in plane shear force. And these are all per unit length. So unit length, of course. And unit length applies also uh, above. Per unit length in the x direction, but Qx is out of plane shear. Shear force per unit length, and the reason why we call it Qx. It is because it is the out of plane shear force per unit length on a face which is perpendicular to the x axis. Okay, very well. So, what about looking at a face which is perpendicular to the y axis? So, here is our plate, and this is now a face which is perpendicular to y. So this is y, this is x, this is z, and the tractions on, on this face here are sigma y, tau yz, and tau xy. Of course, tau xy is the same as tau yx, as we have seen already because of the balance of moment equation. So, what would be the resultant? Sigma y will give us a normal force per unit length in y direction, which we will call ny, and naturally it will come out to be just the integration of sigma y dz. Tau xy will give us a shear force per unit length and there is no uh, new information here. Same definition as before. And we will have shear force, and by shear force we mean out of plane shear force per unit length, qy, which is the integration of tau yz z. So now we are done with all the force resultants. So we have five force resultants. Five force resultants, which means that these are forces per unit length. We have three in plane, nx, ny, and mxy, and these correspond to sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, but instead of representing force per unit area, they represent force per unit length, because now we, we can limit ourselves only to the mid surface, yeah? And two out of plane, 
force resultants, Qx and Qy, and these are net forces in Z per unit length, either per unit length in X direction or Y direction, depending on whether we're considering faces normal to X or faces normal to Y. Okay, so far, so well. So these are all the forces, and in principle, we should be able to go through um, very simple equilibrium conditions. So let us go ahead and do that. So for now, what we're going to do is we are going to assume we have a plate. And I'm not going to draw the thickness direction now, because there is no need to, that, to do that, because we have already found the all, all forces now are per unit length, not per unit area. So we don't have to worry about thickness at all. This is x, this is y, and this is z. And I'm going to consider an infinitesimal part of the plate. So this distance here is delta y, and this distance here is delta x. What would be the loading on the plate? The general loading that's usually considered on plates consists of lateral pressure. So lateral distributed load in that direction. And the intensity of loading per unit area is our pressure, and it is given the simple Q. So Q is lateral pressure. And this is force per unit area. And in general, it is function of x and function of x and y. Of course, if the part of the plate we're talking about is infinitesimal, then Q is just Q at that point, around that point where we are trying to derive equilibrium conditions. Very well. So on the right edge here, the net force per unit length in z direction would be just q x. But this is qx at x plus delta x, assuming that this point here is x and y. So we're going to write this as qx plus delta qx. What would be the force per unit length here on the opposite edge. This is normal to x, so it would be qx. But we will switch the arrow, because as you know, since the normal to this phase is minus x, then all tractions will reverse, will reverse sign. So we will end up with a force per unit length here equal to qx. And similarly, on this side here, we will have qy plus delta qy. And on this side here, we're going to have qy. So let us sum forces in the direction and equate, and equate to 0. We will see that, very simply, what we'll have is uh, what we will have is we will have first Q times area, which is delta X delta Y plus QX plus delta QX times delta Y, which is the length of the edge on which it is operating, minus on the opposite side, we will have qx times delta y. Then we will have plus qy plus delta qy times delta x minus qy delta x. And this should be equal to 0 for equilibrium. This term and this term will cancel. This term and this term will cancel. So if we divide by delta x, delta y, we'll end up with delta qx 
over delta x plus delta qy by delta y plus q equals zero. And then if we take the limit, of course, as delta x and delta y go to zero, we can write this as partial qx partial x plus partial qy partial y plus q equals zero. Of course, there will be two more equilibrium equations which equilibrate the in-plane loads, but our interest in plates is not in what happens if they are loaded in their own plane, but we are much more interested in what happens when they are loaded by pressure, which means that they will be under bending. And as such, the only force equilibrium equation we need is equilibrium equation in the out of plane in the out of plane direction. So this is force per unit area in z direction, net force per unit area in z direction equals zero, and this is the equilibrium equation we were looking for. Now, is it enough just to do our um, force equilibrium equation? Actually, it is not enough. And the reason for that, as a quick aside, let us say that we do have some distributed force in a certain directions. Doesn't matter which direction, so. And it is extended over a certain length. And instead of working with this distributed load, we would like to work with a statically equivalent load, which is concentrated at the midpoint. So what we do is we just find the resultant force and apply the resultant force at this point here. But this is not enough. Because if you have a distribution of forces, it is not only equivalent to a force, but it will also be equivalent to a net moment around this point here. So you have also to add a moment. So the rule is, if you have a distribution of forces or in 1D over a line, and you want to replace it by statically equivalent forces at one point, you don't need only force, but you also need a moment. So if we go back to our plate, we were talking about, so this is just the face which is normal to the x-axis. The rest of the plate is here, which I don't need to to draw. So, and we were talking about working out net forces. Per unit length in y direction. y would be in this direction and z would be in this direction. So, this is equivalent to taking a strip here and trying to find the resultant forces on the strip and replace the forces on this strip here, which looks like a, a short beam, and rep replace the distribution of forces by just a single load. But this is not really going to work. Of course, the net force will, will act, but you also need to calculate the net moment. So this is y-axis going through, and this is our mid-surface. So what we need to do in addition to calculating the net forces, which we have already done, we need to calculate net, net moments. So let us look at what type of tractions. So I'm going to look in this direction.
and here is the face we're talking about of the plate. X is coming out of the screen. And then Y would be in this direction, and Z would be in this direction. So what are the different tractions that exist? We have sigma X, which is would be coming out. And we would also have tau XZ, but tau XZ on a strip will not cause any moment because it doesn't have any width. So the only thing that will cause a moment now, in this view at least, is tau XY. So on a strip like this here, we have tau XY acting in this direction. And this distance here is Z. And the moment it causes around, around X is what we call the twisting moment. Because if you think about it here, moment around X for this phase is essentially you are trying to twist the plate. So we call it M X Y. And you multiply the force, which is tau xy dz. Remember, what we want to do is to calculate moment per unit length. Yeah. So moment per unit length means that we don't need to take into account the delta y here, because we are we want to calculate moment per unit length in y direction, so it's as if we are assuming delta y is unit. So area is tau x, y, dz, and then you multiply by the distance to the midplane, which is z, but you can easily see that this moment is not around x but around minus x, so you have to have a minus sign. And then you sum over from minus thickness over 2 to thickness over 2, so you get integration minus t over 2 to t over 2, and this would give us the twisting moment per unit per unit length. So what we have here is mxy, which is equal to minus integration from t over 2, to t over 2, tau x, y, z, z. OK, so this is one view. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to look in this direction. So I'm going to place my eye here. So I started by placing my eye here, and then I place my eye here, and see what happens. So here is the strip I'm talking about. And we have sigma x acting in this direction. Of course, it's a distribution. And we will see that sigma x will cause a moment around y. And the moment per unit length is going to be, again, the force per unit length will be sigma, sigma x dz. We multiply by. Uh, the arm, of course, Z is pointing down, so actually sigma X is in this direction here, and this is Z. If we put Z above, it would be minus Z, so there is no need for confusion. Sigma X, Z will be creating a moment around Y, so we multiply this by Z and integrate from minus T over 2 to T over 2. And this would be the bending moment. This is a moment that's trying to bend the plate on a face normal to x. So although it is a moment around the y-axis, we are going to actually name it my. And the reason for that, uh, mx, sorry. And the reason for that is that it acts on the, this is the bending moment acting on a face which is perpendicular to x.
So although at the moment it is a moment around x, around y, but we call it mx because it's the bending moment acting on a face normal to uh, the x-axis. And this comes down to be minus t over 2 to t over 2 sigma x z z. Another thing, if you look here, you will see that this type of moment, which would be in this direction like this, this is our mx, it would be causing tension in the top surface, uh, it would be causing compression on the top surface and tension in the bottom surface. Remember that z is going down. And this is defined as our positive positive bending moment. So actually, bending moment is not defined according whether it rotates around x or around y. It just defined such that it causes compression at the top surface and tension at the bottom surface. So at the end of the day, we end up with <coughs> the following moment resultants defined on a phase normal to the x-axis. You have mx, which is bending moment, per unit length. And mxy, which is twisting moment, per unit length. OK, very well. Now what happens for a face which is perpendicular to the y-axis? So here it is. This is y x runs in this direction, and again, z runs down. So if we take a strip in the direction, we will see that there will be a bending moment due to sigma y. So we will have a bending moment, which is integration of sigma y z dz. And this will cause compression top surface, tension bottom surface, so it's a correct sign. And then we will have tau xy again causing moment that causes twisting of the face. But the trouble here is that tau xy here is in this direction. And this is z. So tau xy actually causes a positive moment around y. And as such, when we write myx, it comes out to be minus t over 2 to t over 2 tau xy z dz which is different than the definition we had earlier for mxy, because what we had is mxy was minus integration of minus t over 2 to t over 2 tau xy z dz. But they are not independent, so we know that myx equals minus mxy. And of course, just to be complete, the definition of mx is from minus t over 2 to t over 2 sigma x z is. So these now are the definitions of the moment resultants. And we have four of them, two acting on faces normal to x, which are mx and mxy and two acting on faces normal to y, which is my and myx. 
and mxy and myx are not independent. One of them is negative to is equal to the negative of the other. All right, so now that we have the definition of all resultants, we can proceed to equilibrate over a plate element. We can equilibrate moments around x and moments around y and obtain two moment equilibrium equations. This derivation is already in Maxon's book. I'm not going to repeat it. I'm just going to show you that we can actually, instead of doing it by taking a plate element and working from the definition of the force and moment resultants, we can actually derive the plate equilibrium equations starting from the three-dimensional equilibrium equations, which are written in terms of stresses. So, so we are going to quickly derive the equilibrium equations. from the 3D equations of equilibrium for stresses. So because we assume that the plate is only subject to lateral pressure, so we're really talking about a situation where we have zero body forces. So we will assume we have zero body force, so the stress equilibrium equations are partial sigma x, partial x, plus tau xy partial y plus tau xz partial z equals zero. And this is force per unit volume in x, x is zero. Then partial sigma, sorry. partial tau xy partial x partial sigma y partial y plus partial tau y z partial z equals zero. This is force per unit volume in y equal to zero. And then partial tau xz partial x plus partial tau yz partial y plus partial sigma z partial z equals zero. And this is force per unit volume in z direction equal to zero. So if we want the z equations of equilibrium of forces for the plate, what we do is we just integrate this equation here over the thickness from minus t over 2 to t over 2. If we do that, we can always, because we're integrating with respect to z, and this is a differentiation with respect to x, and this is a differentiation with respect to y, we can re interchange differentiation and integration. So if you integrate this with respect to z equated to 0, you will get partial partial x integration of tau xz dz plus partial partial y integration of tau yz dz plus, of course, since partial sigma z is already partial z, this is a derivative with respect to z, so if you integrate with respect to z, this will give you sigma z from minus t over 2 to t over 2 equals 0. Okay, so now let us just look at each term and decide what it means. The first term is the definition of qx, so this is qx comma x, where comma means derivative. This is the definition of qy, so this is qy comma y, and then what's here? If you look at the plate, 
we had the pressure applying on the top surface, which is Q, but that was pointing down. So the lower surface is free. So this means that sigma z at t over 2, at z equals t over 2 is 0, while sigma z at minus t over 2, which is the top surface, is equal to minus q, because it's coming into the surface, not out of the surface. If you do this here, this is sigma z at t over 2, which is 0, minus sigma z at minus t over 2, which is minus q. So you get q equals 0. And this is exactly the equilibrium equation we have already obtained by equilibrating the small element of the plate and using the definition of the shear resultants because out of plane shear resultants uh, as force per unit length. OK, so how do you get the moment equations? The moment equations are easily obtained if we remember that if you want a um, moment, um, let's say, around x, then this, is, this comes from fy times z. And if you want moment around y, it will come from fx times z. So what we're going to do is, for example, if we multiply this equation here by z and then integrate from minus t over 2 to t over 2, and again, we can take ex exchange differentiation with respect to x and y, we're going to get partial partial x integration tau xy z dz plus integration sigma y z dz plus, and now this is not uh, straightforward. This is integration from t over 2 t t over 2 z partial tau y z partial z dz equals 0. OK, this is the definition of myx. So this is really nothing other than myx comma x. And this is nothing other than <coughs> my. So this is my comma y. And the last term, we can easily integrate by parts. So if we integrate it by parts, we get plus z tau yz from minus t over 2 to t over 2 minus integration from t over 2 t over 2. We differentiate this guy. Differentiation of z is 1. So tau yz z equals 0. And this is nothing other than the definition of qy. This will integrate to 0 because the shear stress on the top surface and the bottom surface is equal to 0 because we have only lateral pressure applied. So this gives us equilibrium equation myx comma x plus my comma y equals qy. This is definition of qy. So this is now the moment equation around x. And because we started from the force equation around around y. So we can now list our equilibrium equations. Of course, we can derive the moment around x, uh, moment around y equation similarly by integrating the first equation after multiplying with respect to z.
we end up with the final form of equilibrium equations. And these will be take the form of mx comma x plus mYx comma y equals qx and mYx comma y plus m y comma y equals q y and then q x comma x plus q y comma y uh, plus q equals zero and these are three equilibrium equations. Now everything depends only on x and y because mx, my and myx depend only on x and y. They don't depend on z anymore because they are the resultant of the stresses through the thickness direction. So in their definition already we have an integration with respect we have an, ex an integration with respect to z and as such they are only functions of x and y the applied load is only function x and y and the equilibrium equations contain only derivatives with respect to x and y so we were able to reduce the equilibrium equations to a set of equations that depend only on x and y and this is kind of the purpose of a plate theory because we don't want to solve a three-dimensional problem because the third dimension is very small and we would like to solve it as a two-dimensional problem. If you count the number of unknown forces here, you have three unknown moment resultants, mx, my, and myx. Actually, or you can call it mxy, they are just the negative of each other. So you have three moment resultants that are unknown and you have two shear resultants which are also unknown. So the net number of unknowns is five unknowns and we have only three out of plane equilibrium equations and as such we don't have enough equations to solve for all unknowns so equilibrium equations are not enough in order to determine the stress, the stress resultants so we have to do something a little bit more involved in order to be able to get uh, our, our solution and this leads us to a consideration of how the displacements of the plate behave and how the strains of the plate behave and this would be the subject of the next lecture.